A base Mac mini with one terabyte of storage usually costs around $1,000 plus. But guess what? I managed to get a one terabyte Mac mini for just $590 brand new. And here's how. On Amazon, there's a sale going on where you can pick up the Mac mini for $500 and then I paired that with a one terabyte crucial external SSD, which only cost me $90. Now you don't have to go for this exact SSD. You can pick any external SSD. A better option is getting an OWC SSD enclosure and then using an NVMe SSD for even faster read write speeds. I'll go ahead and link everything in the description below for you to check out. By combining the base model with an external SSD, I was able to take my Mac mini from 256 gigabytes to one terabyte without spending a fortune. Now I know what you must be thinking, adding storage to a Mac mini using an external drive is no big deal. It's a straightforward process. You just plug in your SSD and then start moving your files over. But what if you could actually run your Mac from the external drive? I'm talking about installing applications, running programs, and automatically storing documents, downloads, and everything is directly on the SSD without you having to do anything manually. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up and use your external SSD as your main drive on the Mac. Now, this isn't about booting directly from the external drive. If you go that route, then Apple intelligence won't work. Instead, I'm gonna walk you through a practical setup where I keep everything running smoothly through the external SSD. I also test the compatibility with Time Machine and see what happens when the SSD is crashed on purpose. While this process works on other Macs, in this video, we're focusing on the all new M4 Mac mini. So let's get started. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to set up your external SSD with your Mac mini. And to do this, we're gonna start from scratch. So the very first thing is you're gonna go through your standard setup, but remember, do not log in. I repeat, do not log into iCloud or App Store or do anything. We're gonna do that once we hook everything up with the external SSD. We're gonna create a local account and call it admin and then put in our password and then hint if you wanna add any hints. You can turn on your location services, analytics, if you like, and then just from here on, you can just set up as normal. You can also enable Apple intelligence if you like, and then finally choose your look, and then you should be on your desktop. All right, next up, we're gonna connect our external drive. I'm using this one terabyte crucial X10 Pro, and then the first thing I did is erase it. Why you ask? Because by default, the new external drive is in an XFAT format which doesn't work with the Mac OS. We're gonna change the file system to APFS or Apple file system. And then once we do that, hit erase, confirm, and then it's gonna format the drive, erase it, and then remount it. All right, we're gonna create our local account. Go to settings and then click on user and groups. We're gonna leave our current account, the admin account as is, and add a new user. The reason we are doing that is so that if anything bad happens, we always have a secondary admin account on the internal Mac drive when adding your new user, you'll be prompted for putting your current account credentials. Go ahead and put that in. And then the first thing you wanna do is change the user type from standard to administrator. Then enter your new account information. In my case, the username I chose is called mini. And then enter your password, enter it again, and then add any hint if you like. Finally, click on create user and then the new user will be created. Now right click on the newly created user account and then go to advanced options. I don't know why Apple has hidden this option. So go down where it says home directory and before we make any changes, now what you wanna do is click on your desktop, then press the command key, the shift key, and then the letter G all together put a forward slash and then press enter and then change your view from icons to columns. Now we should see the internal and external drives. What we're gonna do is move all our files and folders from our new profile, which is called mini, from our internal drive to the external drive before we hook up our profile to the external drive. So navigate to the user folders. Now you wanna copy everything, but before we do that, you wanna copy everything that includes hidden files and folders. And to show your hidden files and folders, what you wanna do is click on the command, shift, and period at the same time. And then you should be presented with all the hidden files and folders. Go ahead and select everything and then copy by doing command C. Next, you wanna go to your external drive and then paste, put in your password if it asks you for one, and then the file should get moved over. Now we can continue by changing our home directory from our internal drive by going to admins Mac mini and then choosing X10 Pro since that's our external drive. Once you do that, go ahead and click open and then hit okay. And that's it. Now we should be able to reboot. After you reboot, you'll need to switch to the new profile, which I named mini. 
To do that, hit the escape key and then choose mini. When logging in, you'll be prompted to set up your user account again. This time, follow the instructions carefully and after that, log into your Apple account. And again, customize everything to your liking. Remember, this is our main profile from now on. Now you can use your external SSD to run your Mac applications, store files and documents by default on the external drive. In my case, I went from 256 gigabytes to a whopping one terabyte of space. But it's not as simple as it seems. Some applications like DaVinci Resolve will still get installed on the internal drive. However, applications that give you the option to install on a specific location can be installed on the external drive. I installed some of the applications like Chrome, CapCut, and DaVinci Resolve. These by default got installed on the internal drive. For DaVinci Resolve, CapCut, it did not even give me an option to install it on the external drive. But since my user profile is on the external drive, all my profiles and projects for DaVinci Resolve got placed automatically on the external drive. So I didn't have to manually go configure all that separately. Next, I installed Crossovers, which is great for running Windows games on Mac. I installed Crossovers specifically on my external SSD where I'm planning to set up Counter-Strike 2 and a bunch of other games. Since modern games are huge in size, it just made sense to use the external storage for that. Now for the Apple Store, I went into the settings and I made a quick tweak to make sure that any apps larger than one gigabyte automatically get installed on my external drive. And to test it out, I installed Asphalt Racing Game and guess what, it worked perfectly. It went straight to the external drive without a hitch. Finally, I moved a lot of my files and folders from my home NAS server onto the Mac on the external drive. And overall, I now have around 200 gigabytes worth of applications, games, and documents on the Mac mini and on the external drive. I did this to mimic the real world use case, which is mainly to see what happens when I crash the drive on purpose. But first, before we crash anything, let's set up time machine first so that in the event of an SSD crash, we should be able to restore from the time machine backup. All right, for setting up the time machine, I plugged in my one terabyte SanDisk SSD. Once it was plugged in, I went ahead and right clicked on erase disk. When erasing the disk, I always choose APFS, which is the Apple file system, and then click erase. It will ask you, are you sure? And then just click yes. Once that's done, then you wanna search for the time machine by clicking on the search and then open up time machine right away. It's gonna ask you to set up time machine and you can choose what disk you wanna use. In my case, I'm gonna be using the one terabyte SanDisk SSD for the time machine backup. And then if you wanna encrypt your backup, just put in a password and a hint if you like. After this, you wanna do the most important step. The most important step is go into options on the time machine and then remove your current external drive from the exclusion list. I know it sounds confusing, right? Basically, the drive that are listed here will be excluded from a time machine backup. And we're trying to back up our external drive, so we wanna go ahead and remove that from the list. Next, I started my first backup. The first backup will take time because not only we're backing up the main internal hard drive, we're also backing up the external drive. So my internal drive is around 33 gigabytes of storage. It's not being used that much. And my external drive, the Crucial X10 Pro, is about 208 gigabytes with all the games and files and documents that I put on the drive. It's gonna be a while, so sit back, relax, and watch some of my other videos. And sorry for the shameless plug. Now, before I intentionally crash this drive, let me show you what's running on it. On the first page, I've got my Chrome browser open and I'm signed into my account. On the second page, I'm running crossovers with Steam for PC gaming and I have Counter-Strike 2 fully installed and running. And on the third page, I got DaVinci Resolve open, seeing this exact video, and it's about 18 minutes long since it's all raw footage. Now, the real test is once this drive crashes, can I restore everything back to the way it was? All right, let's simulate the crash. I just went ahead and unplugged the drive, and that's all it took to crash it. After it was unplugged, Chrome crashed right away and disappeared. Crossovers started spinning and went out of control. DaVinci Resolve completely crashed as well. And then when I tried to reopen DaVinci Resolve, it didn't even recognize my profile or setting. It's as if it's a brand new setup. To make things even worse, I kept getting this error message saying keychain not found and it would not go away. And I was also logged out of my iCloud on the Mac mini. So the real challenge begins. So now the question is, can we recover and get back to exactly right before we left off? Well, let's give it a shot. Now, I tried many different variations and this is what worked. The first thing I did was I rebooted my Mac and logged back in. Next, I plugged in my new SSD. I had an exact same brand of SSD, 
So I just plugged that in. The very first step I took was to erase the disk. And you guessed it, I need to change it back to Apple File System or APFS because the XFAT format will not work with Apple. I also renamed the drive to avoid any potential conflicts. My original drive was called X10 Pro, so I renamed the new one to X10 Pro. Just to clarify, this drive was completely empty and freshly formatted and ready to go. Next, I plugged in my Time Machine drive and then I entered the Time Machine. I navigated to my restore point, which was right around 9.50 p.m. version. Then I clicked on it and then I chose X10 Pro. That was my drive. I wanted to restore onto the new SSD, but as you can see, it would not give me the restore option. It wouldn't even let me click on the restore button as it was grayed out. So I decided to take a different approach. I opened up my Time Machine drive and manually selected the backup. In this case, the backup was listed in military time, which is 2149, which means 9.49 p.m. From here, I copied the X10 Pro folder directly onto my SSD. The process was surprisingly quick. It took less than 10 minutes to copy 200 gigabytes of data. Next, I opened the copied folder and moved all the contents back to the root level of the drive, just like it was on the previous drive. To ensure I didn't miss anything, I first unhid all the hidden folders by clicking Command, Shift, and Period. Once everything was visible, I copied all the contents and moved them one level higher to the root of the drive. After confirming everything was in place, I deleted the now empty X10 Pro folder. Well, it wasn't empty, it still had stuff in there, so, but I deleted it. After this step, the first thing left to do was reset my Mac. To do that, I opened up my settings, type erase, and looked for the option transfer or reset. From here, it prompted me with the migration assistant, which is supposed to restore your time machine backup. However, in my previous attempts, I tried that option and it did not work for me. So the best course of action was to erase all content directly through the settings and then let the Mac reset by itself. I just, I just followed all the prompts and then selected erase all content. The Mac mini rebooted and then brought me to the activation page. And then at that point, you either need to connect to Wi-Fi or plug in your network cable, and then it would activate itself. After that, it was back to the initial setup screen. From here, I followed the usual set of prompts, choosing the language, selecting the country, and so on and so on, until I got to the migration assistant. At this point, I connected my time machine drive, entered my credentials when prompted, and once those were verified, I saw both the X10 Pro backup and the Macintosh HD data. I then selected the Macintosh HD because that's the main internal drive that we are trying to restore from. After that, I chose the correct backup time, which for me was around 9.50 p.m. Central Time, and then I clicked Continue. On the next page, I got a message saying that my user's home folder was relocated and would not be copied. But that was fine since we already took care of that step right before resetting the Mac. I also had the option to set new passwords or keep original ones. Once I made that choice, the restore process began. It only took a few minutes and then from there prompted me to reboot the system. After the reboot, I was back on the login screen. I logged into my profile and this time it asked me for my Apple ID credentials. It actually remembered who I was. All I had to do was provide my Apple account password. Once that was done, I was back on my Mac and everything was set up correctly. It worked just like the way it did right before the crash. To test if everything worked just like it was before the crash, I opened up DaVinci Resolve and then opened up my last project and it took me right where I left off. I launched Chrome and this time I was still signed in just like before. Then I fired up Steam through Crossfire and then all my games were still there and playable. Everything was exactly the way it was right before the crash. So it was a complete success. So what have you learned from all this? Adding an external SSD to your Mac mini can dramatically increase your storage capacity and provide you with more flexibility. However, the approach you take to set up and use the external SSD can make a significant difference in your experience. To conclude, there are two options for transferring files from an external SSD to your computer. The first option is to manually plug in your SSD and move your files over. This can be tedious because you'll have to keep moving files to an external drive and manually change the preferences of each application to point to the external drive. The second option is to change or run your user profile or home directory from the external SSD. This automatically puts all the user data onto the SSD without any manual intervention. This is a time-saving option, but you'll need to be careful because if the SSD fails or if you accidentally unplug the drive, 
it can be a painstaking process to get back to your original data. From what I've experienced, both options have their advantages and disadvantages. If you're not keen on dealing with all that, you might want to consider splurging extra at the Apple store and buying your high storage Mac mini. Well guys, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. Consider supporting me and liking and subscribing to this channel. Thanks for watching.